My brothers, my sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues with us, reminding us how to lead our lives. We earn, it should be pure. We spend, it should be good and wise. Don't spend in an unwise manner. Otherwise, you will regret. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا أَنفَقُوا لَمْ يُسْرِفُوا وَلَمْ يَقْتُرُوا وَكَانَ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ قَوَامًا And I've explained that already. Let's move further. وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرُ وَلَا يَقْتُنُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا يَزْنُونَ Three things that he has mentioned one after the other. The true worshippers of the most merciful who will achieve the mercy of the Almighty are those who do not associate partners in worship with the Almighty. They worship him alone. Whoever made me, I owe all acts of worship to him and him alone. No one else. As a Muslim, I am not allowed to render any act of worship to anyone besides he who made me, he whom I'm going to return to. He alone I will put my head on the ground for and declare, O oh, you who made me, you are the greatest. O oh, you whom I'm going to return to, you are the greatest. And I will worship none other than the maker, the nourisher, the cherisher, the sustainer, the provider, the curer, the one in whose hands lies absolute control of every aspect of existence he is the only one worthy of worship that is why we say la ilaha illallah there is none worthy of worship besides he who made me allah rabbul izzati wal jalal so allah says they worship none besides allah none besides their maker none besides he whom they are going to return to and they do not commit murder they do not commit murder. A true believer never commits murder. We don't harm others. If you're a true believer, you realize the giver of the life is Allah. Who are you to take that life that Allah gave away? Subhanallah. Allah gave life. Allah gave all those who are seated here life. All those on earth, Allah gave them life. Who gave me the right to take away the life that the giver of life who gave me my life has given? Subhanallah. If it was your right to take away the lives of others, it would be their right to take your life away. And that would mean Allah created us for chaos, which is not true. Common logic, my brothers and sisters. And Allah says it in the Quran. لا يقتلون النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق. They do not commit murder in a nutshell. And after you have respected Allah and respected the creatures of Allah, Allah says, respect yourself. They don't engage in immorality. They don't fornicate. They don't commit adultery. Amazing. Look at the order. How beautiful Allah has placed these pieces of advice. You want the mercy of Allah? Respect Allah. You want the mercy of Allah? Respect other people. You want the mercy of Allah? Respect yourself. Amazing. How do I respect others? By acknowledging that their life is sacred. To begin with. And it's a long topic, but I'm only mentioning the brief. How do I respect myself? By carrying yourself with the highest of morals and values. You don't swear, you don't abuse. We spoke about that already. But on top of that, maintain the protection of your private parts. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has said, whoever guarantees me the correct use of his tongue and the correct use of his private parts, I guarantee him paradise. Amazing. Which means all problems, difficulties, hardships on earth are connected to your tongues and your private parts. May Allah help us to protect ourselves. Those who have fallen in abuse, those who have fallen into adultery and fornication, it's not too late. Seek the forgiveness of Allah. And remember, you can fulfill your sexual desires in a permissible way, but you need to regularize it according to what the Almighty has taught. Amazing. So Allah teaches you when you have developed these sexual feelings out of your base nature. Allah says, you know what? We will give you a permissible channel to actually 
Fulfill those desires in a respectful way. You have respected yourself. May Allah grant us honor. May Allah grant us dignity. May Allah not expose our sins. May He grant us the ability to seek forgiveness. And may He forgive us. And may He strengthen us such that we respect ourselves in the highest possible way. My beloved brothers and sisters, your maker loves you. He loves you so much. Look at how beautifully he's advising you. You want the mercy. Well, this is how you get mercy. Respect others. Respect the Almighty by worshipping him alone. Respect yourself by carrying yourself with the highest level of morals and values. And this is why those who have fallen into adultery, those who have succumbed to the pressures of their own desires, Allah says, he speaks about how those who commit evil acts deserve the punishment. Then he says, except those who seek forgiveness, they turn back to their maker. They do good deeds thereafter. They change their lives in a good way. Allah says for them, we will convert the bad deeds into good deeds. And Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. Imagine Allah says, I won't only forgive you. On top of the forgiveness, the bad deeds that you did in the past life, I will grant you such expiation that I will convert the value into good deeds because you quit it solely for my sake, for my pleasure. Why did you quit adultery and fornication, immorality and evil? Why did you quit it? You quit it for your maker. Allah says, I love you so much. Your reward is quadrupled with me and even more. That's Allah, the mercy of Allah. Nobody can compete with the mercy of Allah. So don't let anyone con you that Allah is not merciful. He is most merciful. Amazing. Allah says you must be warned of something. Don't bear false witness. And don't waste your time. Be productive. My beloved youth in this beautiful country of Uganda and across the globe, use your energies in the right direction. Go out and volunteer for a good cause. Spend your time, your effort, your energies and your resources to serve humanity, to serve Allah by serving humanity. Go out and help the widows and the orphans solely for the pleasure of Allah. Go out and assist in the causes of those who are struggling solely for the pleasure of Allah. Use your time productively. Do something constructive. Benefit yourself. Increase yourself in education. Serve your nation and develop it in a positive way. Don't be a liability. Rather, be an asset. May Allah grant us the ability to be assets to our communities, societies and our nations. My beloved brothers and sisters, living a happy, stress-free life as a Muslim begins with relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and strengthening one's connection to faith. Regular prayer, recitation of the Quran and remembrance of Allah help Muslims find peace in the face of challenges. Trusting in Allah's plan brings contentment. Knowing that everything happens with divine wisdom and purpose, the spiritual grounding helps ease worries and builds resilience. Another key to stress-free life is maintaining a balanced lifestyle. Islam encourages moderation in all aspects of life, from worship to work and recreation, by managing time wisely, setting realistic goals and ensuring a balance between obligations to family, work and personal growth. A Muslim can reduce the overwhelming feelings that lead to stress, physical well-being, including proper nutrition, rest and exercise, also plays an important role in maintaining mental and emotional health. Lastly, positive social connections contribute greatly to happiness. Islam faces a strong emphasis on community, family and helping others. 
by nurturing supportive relationships, engaging in acts of kindness and avoiding negative influences, a Muslim can build a strong support network. Social bonds, combined with the principles of forgiveness and gratitude, foster a sense of belonging and reduce feelings of isolation, ultimately leading to a happier and more fulfilling life.